Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi to depart to Washington, D.C. in uh, the United States. This is a trip that will be impactful not only for India, but also in the Pacific, um, in, the, in, in, the, in the South Pacific and also in the region. Let's uh, cross to my colleagues, Molly Gambir and also uh, Sidhan Sibol. Let's talk about this trip and also let's talk about uh, the trip by the U.S. State um, Secretary of State, Antin Blinken, to China. Molly Gambir and Sidhan Sibol, good to see you. They are both in the United States. Molly, I will start with you. What are the preparations being made right now for the Indian Prime Minister's visit? Well, Eric, preparations are underway in full swing. Uh, the U.S. is all set to roll out the red carpet to welcome the Indian leader. After all, this is his maiden state visit here uh, to the United States. Just days to go. The countdown is uh, well and truly on. And uh, we've been speaking to a number of experts who've talked about uh, the significance of uh, this state visit when it comes to boosting the relationship on multiple levels uh, between the two sides. Just look at the terms that have been used. Uh, a springboard uh, to um, take this uh, relationship to touch new horizons, uh, to launch the next level of the partnership, so on and so forth. Uh, the uh, U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan himself talking about how, uh, you know, this visit is not just about the bullet points on paper. It's overall about uh, taking things to the whole new level and a lot about removing obstacles. Speaking of which, uh, defense cooperation, of course, will be uh, a pivotal uh, aspect as far as this uh, visit is concerned, defense cooperation, and the way it's going to strengthen the strategic partnership between the two sides uh, in uh, this phase is going to be closely watched uh, given uh, the deals that are on the horizon, uh, be the GE deal or uh, the uh, deal to buy uh, American armed drones. Having said that, uh, we of course are also looking forward to the uh, New York leg uh, of uh, the Indian Prime Minister where he will be leading the International Yoga Day celebrations at the United Nations headquarters and uh, we have been speaking to Indian Americans as well who are uh, going to be leaving no stone unturned to uh, welcome the Indian Prime Minister when he arrives here in the United States. Thank you Molly Gambir for that. Let me now cross over to our principal diplomatic correspondent Sidhan Sibol. Apart from the Indian Prime Minister's visit to the United States we also have the U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken uh, landing in Beijing for his first state visit to China. Uh, what, are the, what is the significance of this trip for the United States and China? Well, the U.S. Secretary of State uh, Blinken lands, uh, even as there are concerns as to how India and, of course, uh, uh, other countries in the region view China. China has been very aggressive and it has been aggressive with the United States uh, in a different way, not in terms of territorially, but in terms of trade and other uh, reasons. We know that when it comes to uh, US and China, relationship has seen a uh, downward fall, similar situation as India and China have. And it's interesting to note uh, uh, this is a week that will see uh, the Americans reaching out to Beijing and how India and uh, U.S. Uh, essentially reaffirm and cement their relationship. As to what happens, uh, there are strong hopes for a breakthrough, but it is highly unlikely that there will be a breakthrough in the relationship between U.S. and China. We saw uh, the number of instances happening. Uh, we know this visit essentially was postponed because of the instance we saw in the United States, the Balloon incident. But uh, essentially, uh, we know that uh, both uh, uh, the Americans and the Chinese will be keen that the temperatures are lower down, especially at a time when the geopolitics of the region, the Indo-Pacific, is in flux. But it is highly unlikely as well, given how aggressive China has been in the region. Sidan Sibo, before we began this conversation with uh, both you, Molly Gambir, and uh, yourself, we were talking about the inclusion of uh, African nations in the G20. This is a proposal which has been made by the Indian Prime Minister. Critics say that, that this is a very bold step. 
Uh, what would be the symbolic sin significance of including African nations in the G20 uh, presidency or membership? Well, Eric, African Union is a mega grouping. It's a grouping of uh, 55 African countries. And uh, we know that India is the size of Africa. In fact, India has been position for an African country at the reformed United Nations Security Council. Now, we know that India is the president of uh, uh, the G20 grouping and as the president, India interestingly hosted the voice of the Global South Summit earlier this year in which India's focus was to highlight the problems and the challenges that the countries of the Global South, uh, most of them are from Africa, from of course uh, uh, is, uh, the ASEAN uh, countries uh, from Latin America as well. But essentially, India wants to give a voice to the African countries. In fact, uh, what is interesting to know that uh, last week in New Delhi, there was uh, an India-Africa partnership summit that was addressed by the Indian External Affairs Minister, Dr. A.S. Jayashankar, and he pointed that how Africa's rise is an important symbolic moment of how the global geopolitics is changing and to reflect that this move has been made by the Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi that uh, African Union should become member of the G20 and that also empowers uh, the G20 grouping as well. Our principal diplomatic correspondent Sidhan Sibol, Molly Gambir, sorry to keep you waiting for a little bit longer but uh, we recently saw the Indian Prime Minister in Australia now he's headed to the United States is the excitement the same? Eric, could you repeat that, please? We recently saw the Indian Prime Minister visit Australia, and now he's headed to the United States. Is the excitement that we witnessed in Australia the same in the United States? Well, uh, just uh, uh, look at uh, the engagements that the Indian Prime Minister has been undertaking, uh, uh, not just uh, speaking of the, the partnership between India and the U.S., but on multiple levels uh, with uh, uh, countries across the spectrum, uh, Eric, and you... Uh, get the larger picture and the messaging is out there very clear how India is all set to uh, lead um, when it comes to uh, taking uh, these partnerships in different aspects forward. Uh, now this particular state visit of the Indian leader, of course, is very significant in that uh, aspect, in that uh, context as well. Uh, given how the US-India relationship has uh, gone from one strength to the other over the past decade, um, the very fact that this is the maiden visit, the maiden state visit uh, of the Indian leader, uh, he has, of course, visited the US as many as six times earlier, uh, but this will be the first state visit of the Indian leader. Uh, that, of course, tells us the kind of importance that the U.S. is attaching to this relationship at this point as well. And it's a mutual, uh, 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 mutual uh, uh, emphasis that the two sides are laying uh, on this partnership. Uh, we are looking at uh, uh, the people-to-people -people connection only going stronger. We're looking at defense cooperation, uh, transfer of technology, uh, you know, talk about how there is a need for the two sides to develop a technology corridor as well, uh, given how uh, uh, the dominance of China and the uh, aggression of China needs to be countered as well. Uh, so that in itself tells us about the scope of collaboration uh, between the U.S. and India, uh, given that they are the world's two largest democracies and the opportunities are immense and like I was mentioning earlier, it's a lot about removing hurdles and uh, solidifying uh, the commitment that already has been laid out over the past decade. Live from New York City, our correspondent Molly Gambir. Molly, thank you. We On is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.